Hi everyone, I'm Eloy from Knowledge Sharing Tech. In this video, I want to show you how to backup and restore your files and folders in Windows 11. The method I'm going to show you uses file history, a native functionality in Windows 11. I'll be covering in this video the following aspects, how to choose a correct external hard drive and how to initialize this hard drive for the backup, how to enable file history, and how to include also folders that are not by default included in file history. And also I want to show you what happens if you enable OneDrive synchronization for your backup. And also I'll be covering, of course, the restoring of files and folders from the backup. So the first thing to do is to determine how much data you are going to be backing up so that you get the external hard drive to support this data. I'm going to show you how. So let me switch to my Windows 11 computer. And here, to know how much data you have, click on File Explorer. And then under File Explorer, click this PC. Double click the C drive. Double click Users. And here, choose your user. And then right click on it. And then click on Properties. And here you see I have only one gigabyte. Of course, this is a test PC. So you might have like gigabytes and gigabytes. Anyways, at least get an external hard drive that is at least twice the volume of the data you will be backing up. So here I have an external hard drive. It is 500 gigabytes. So I'm going to be connecting the drive to my 3.0 port on my PC. And here's the drive connected. And the next step I'm going to show you is to see if the drive is initialized or not. Here, if you don't see the drive under this PC, it means that the drive is not initialized and this is the case here so to initialize the drive all you have to do is to do the following click on the start menu here click on settings and then under settings click on system and then click on storage and under storage here click on advanced storage settings and under advanced storage settings click on disks and volumes and here you have all the drives that are on your computer, the drives that are initialized and not initialized. So let me expand this a little bit. And you notice here, this is my external drive and you can recognize it by its size. So this is a 500 gigabytes. And you see here that it is unallocated. So click on unallocated and then click on create volume under unallocated after you select it. And here, let's tame it backup. So I'm just going to bring to your attention one thing that if your drive is initialized, meaning you see it under this PC, please don't do this because this will erase all the drive. So this is only for drives that you cannot see under this PC. So after you name your drive here, just click on format, keep everything by default. And now the drive is initialized and you see it is drive E here. If you open it, you see that it is empty now. So now what I'm going to show you is how to enable file history. So to enable file history, you need to start control panel. Click here on the finder and then key in control panel. And start control panel. In control panel, if you don't have this view here, you might have this view here. Simply click on category. And then under category, click on large icons. And then here, click on file history. And you notice that file history is not turned on now. It is saying file history is off. It detected also the external hard drive. In case you have many hard drives, you can select the drive you want to use here. But here we have only one external hard drive. So all you have to do here is click on turn on. So when you turn on file history, now it is turned on and with the default settings. Let me show you a little bit the settings that you can do with file history. So first, I told you about the select drive. This is in case you have many drives. This is not the case here. And here also, you can exclude folders. So if you have folders that you don't want to back up, you can add them here by clicking on add, selecting the folder, and then it will be excluded. And you have your advanced settings. And the advanced settings simply here, this is like the schedule, which is every hour. And keep saved versions. 
it is forever by default here for instance i don't like to keep it forever for myself i mean if you don't use a file after six months it means that you don't need the file so i'm gonna put it six months of course here choose the keep safe versions to the setting that you like and here for safe copies of file on the interval i like to keep it on each hour so here i'm satisfied with these settings i'm gonna click on save changes i'm gonna here force a backup to run now so i'm gonna click on run now and you see file history is copying files because of course we have only one gigabytes it is very fast and for now i mean this is enough if you want to enable file history but now i'm gonna show you also how to add folders that are not included by default in your libraries and this is very important and to achieve this we need to edit a file called config1.xml i'm gonna show you how to do it so click on the finder and then here type percent local app data percent and select the first one and here double click microsoft and let's go to windows double click windows and then double click file history and then double click configuration and here you have the configuration of file history and this is a config one here file that we're gonna touch only so to do this here let me show you first what folder i'm gonna back up so here let me open a new window and here under c i have this shared file folder here that i want to back up it has only one file and this is also for the demonstration of course so if i open it and i copy here the path let me minimize this so you need to edit config1.xml so of course if you want to copy it first to back it up it's a good idea so right click on it and then select open with and then here click choose another app and then click more apps and then click notepad and okay let me here maximize it you see here you have everything that is included in the backup so we need to add a folder and simply here to add a folder you see here user folder click on the end of the line hit enter to open a new line and then respect the format as it is copy this so Control c and then here simply press Control v and we need to change here this path so the path i copied it before and here i'm using clipboard history so the windows key with v and then i'm gonna choose the shared files so here you see i added a line that starts with user folder c shared files and then here it ends you see i forgot to put the bracket here should put it like this so to respect the same syntax and now save the file so the file is saved So let's force a backup now to see if it will back up the shared files folder. So click on run now. And now it is backing up. And let's see now if it backed up also the folder that we just added. So click on restore personal files. And you see here that it added the shared files folder that we just included in the configuration file. So here's the file that was in the folder. So this is how you add a folder that is not included in your library to be picked up with file history. So now we saw how to back up and how to add a folder. Now I'm gonna show you if you enable OneDrive synchronization, what will happen? Simply in a word that your files will still be backed up, but the location of the files will change so that you don't find this strange, I'm gonna show you. So I'm gonna enable here OneDrive synchronization let me close everything so to enable onedrive synchronization i'm gonna click here i'm gonna do it very quickly so under system here storage advanced storage settings backup options so i'm gonna click setup syncing i'm gonna put here my email address so this is knowledge sharing tech sign in and i'm gonna put my password and sign in so next so now OneDrive synchronization is enabled for desktop, documents, and pictures. So these are the folders that will be synced 
to OneDrive. So now OneDrive synced all the files and folders to OneDrive. So let me close this window here. We don't need it anymore. And let me show you what happens now to your files as they are backed up. So let's open file history once again. So here also you can open file history simply by typing file history and then selecting file history. And let's force a backup now. Click on run now. And the backup is underway. So now the backup has finished. Let's click on restore personal files to see what is backed up now. So here, if you click on documents, you'll see that it is empty. And don't worry because documents are still saved, but they are under OneDrive. So here, double click OneDrive and you see your documents, they are here. So all the documents that were local to your PC, you can see them under OneDrive here. So the documents are still backed up. One thing that you should consider when you enable OneDrive synchronization is that the folders that you added manually to config one.xml will be removed. And this happens only when you enable OneDrive synchronization. So you should re-edit config one.xml and add these folders and they will stay in this file. So now I showed you how to back up. I'm gonna show you now the different ways to restore. So first, let's start with this method. So I'm gonna close this one here. So I'm gonna open Explorer. So I'm gonna show you here under documents, if I change the document, if I wanna restore it, what will happen? So let me open, for instance, a local document here. So this is a local document, it's called Ledger. It's of course, it's fictitious. So let me open it. Let's say I change something here and I don't want to change it. So let me say here, good morning. And then let me save it. And then I realized that I don't need this file. So to restore it, simply right click on it and then click on properties and then click on previous versions. And then here you have one previous version only. So click on it and then click on restore and then click on replace. So this way you replace the corrupted file or the file that you made changes that you don't want the changes in. Of course here, I'm not gonna restore it. Before I do this, let me show you that you can also click here, restore to, to change the location in case you wanna like uh, compare the two files. So let me continue with the restore. So I'm gonna replace the file in the destination. And here's the file you see if I open ledger, so now the old version was restored. So this is one way of restoring a file. Let me show you now, for instance, if we deleted a complete folder, what will happen? Let me show you on pictures here. So let me delete here the personal pic here. So it has one file in it. Let's say I deleted this by mistake and I wanna restore it. So let me also empty the recycle bin. So now there is no way to restore it except for going to the backup and restore it. So to do this here, you need to start file history. So this is file history in our here recent files. I'm just gonna, gonna click on it and then click on restore personal files. And here, this is the latest file. So we deleted something under pictures. So double click pictures and we deleted the personal pic that has this uh, picture here so click on it and then simply here click on the button so if you need an older version here before i restore it you can also here you have the versions of the backup they go back in time remember that we configured file history to backup each hour so you will find a version each hour so i'm gonna take the latest one and by default when you open restore here it will open the latest backup so double click on pictures and we need to restore personal pic. So click on it and then click on restore. So it will simply restore it. So it restored it and it opened the pictures folder also automatically so that you can see the restore that happened. So this is here the personal pic and this is the file restored. So that was it for how to backup and restore files in Windows 11. I hope that you enjoyed this video and you found it useful. If you did, please share it, subscribe to my channel, and give this video a thumbs up. I would really appreciate it and it will help the channel big time. I want to thank you all for watching and see you in the next video.